When you get right down and look at it, the SQL injection attack is nothing more than passing some parameters or some unexpected data to a SQL server, usually through a web front end or a web form or a URL. It's very common to see this type of attack mounted against a backend database when you can't reach the backend database directly. There's a firewall in the way, there's a tunnel in the way, there's something going on, but you can reach a web front end or an app front end that actually communicates with that SQL backend, that database backend. The target or the goal of this is to get the database to execute whatever command you want it to execute, whether that's a data compromise or malicious code or whatever it's going to be. Oftentimes it could be uh, all usernames and passwords on that database. It could be a change of data. You can actually send it commands that will change data that's existing there. You could get it to run arbitrary code. You can get it to open up a command prompt in some environments, uh, given some specific parameters. It really does depend on what you're trying to do, whether you're trying to do malicious uh, types of data deletion or, or data drop attacks, or whether you're actually just trying to compromise, or whether you're just trying to proof of concept to see if you can get any code at all to run back there. The limit really is your imagination and your familiarity with SQL commands. The most common myth around this is that the only systems that are vulnerable are systems that use Microsoft's SQL Server as a backend database. That's actually not the case at all. SQL, in this case, SQL, stands for Structured Query Language. And Structured Query Language is a common language across virtually all modern databases. So although Microsoft SQL Server has the letters SQL in the name of the product, it is definitely not the only one that can be affected by this kind of interaction or by this type of attack. Pretty much any database out there today can be impacted. Oracle, uh, DB2, MySQL, Anything like that, any database that actually interacts with a web front end or with clients using standard SQL commands has the potential to be impacted by this. And there is a bit of a difference here between a SQL injection attack and a web server attack or a web app act attack here. The reason is that the web application itself is not being attacked. It can be used as a conduit or as a launching point you use uh, the web front end in its place to actually conduct the SQL injection attack. But all it's really doing is helping you pass the parameters back that you want to, or the commands that you want back to the database itself. So the web app may not be impacted at all. You're not trying to compromise the web server. You're not trying to compromise the web pages. You're actually trying to just use the web server and the web pages to attack SQL itself. That's an important little nuance here because you'll see that virtually all of these attacks happen through either URL changing or form modification or form uh, spoofing, field spoofing, things like that. But that's not really attacking the web app or the web server, although it does take advantage of poorly written web apps and poorly designed and poorly secured web servers. It doesn't actually attack them.